Deepak Arora, Bands ENT faculty. We'll be discussing a topic of autology with the help of this LCT. So let us start. A 58 year old patient, Kamla, present with 7 days history of left facial pain, persistent ear discharge, and diplo. Her symptom increased over the last 3 days. Eye examination confirmed the finding of diplopia and there was no meningeal sign on admission. Study the given CT and comment on the diagnosis. So the patient came to me with a history of ear discharge, deep seated pain, facial pain, and diplopia. On CT examination, if you focus, if you compare the right temporal segment with the left side, on the right side we are getting ear cells. The ear cells are clearly visible along with there is clear evidence of pneumatization. Well, on the left side, the destructive lesions are seen in the mastoid and the surrounding segment. Destructive lesion in the mastoid along with a typical history of facial pain, ear discharge and diplopia go in the favor of Grandigo syndrome, one of the complications of chronic subcritical hepatitis B. Now, let us compare this option, Grandigo syndrome, with the other options given. The Grandigo syndrome, the first always remember is I always give a mnemonic with a capital D. Three Ds are there, discharge, deep-seated pain and diplopia. Why, why diplopia or deep-seated pain is there? Deep-seated pain is because of involvement of fifth now, while the diplopia is because of involvement of sixth now. now here comes a potential MCQ. They can ask you, in blood negotiation, no, why the patient is having diplopia? Here is the pressure symptom. The pressure is in the Dorelius canal. So again, the alphabet D will help you discharge diplopia, deep-seated and Dorelius Kenna. These are important keywords for red nipple syndrome. Now, one option I have given you, optic hypocephalus, is again a rare complication of chronic separate media. But in this patient, the examiner will be giving you added words like headache, blood vision will be there because of pressure symptom. The blood vision, headache, and vomiting will be mentioned in the answer. One option I have given you, thrombophilitis. In this patient, of lateral sinus thrombophilitis, patient will be having a high grade spiky fever that is because of microemboli being released at regular intervals with a headache and edema over the mastoid. When we examine the patient of lateral sinus thrombophilitis, we always have an edema over the mastoid that is because of blockage and what we call it as the singular sign. And if I do fundoscopy of this patient, I will get the same edema over the retinal veins which we call it as throwback. On lab investigation, we will be going for any patient will be having anemia. So this combination going in the favor of thrombophilitis. If you focus on MCQ again, I have given you the fourth option that is your Trotter syndrome. What is the difference between Grandigo syndrome and Trotter syndrome? Trotter syndrome is a hallmark feature of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. In nasopharyngeal carcinoma, patient have a triad of blue ear with fifth and tenth nerve palsy. Just again, I'm highlighting the point. Fifth and sixth nerve involvement go in the favor of red nipple syndrome, while fifth and tenth nerve will go in the favor of Trotter syndrome. Okay. So always remember the fifth nerve is common, but the difference is of sixth nerve and tenth nerve. So this is the way we should rule out the other options. I always say it as dissection of the MCQ. You should be confident why the other options are wrong options. Now coming back on the same topic of clinical syndrome. I am showing you one more MCQ. The same question in a different format. So let us crack this one now. Gladigo syndrome. I will be using this platform to teach you basic skill. How to focus on the choices. Just if you have a bird eye view on this MCQ. If you see the option. Gladigo syndrome is option B. Where I should focus on foot pain in love. Once I see the foot pain in love. I will rule out the option. 7th pain in love. The option is ruled out. 10th pain in love. Again, options rule out. So, I am, I am highlighting these words. Why? Because it will help you in the time management in the examination hall. Now, after ruling out the option B, C, and D, I will read the option A nicely. Auditorium. Six nerve pain with palsy with retroabatic pain due to involvement of fifth nerve. Yes, absolutely true for Gernigo syndrome. So, after learning the basics of Gernigo syndrome, let us discuss the now, let us come on the investigation segment. This patient of left unsafe here, presenting with pain behind the left eye and diplopia. What is the further ideal investigation? The four options given audiometry, HRCT, oral swab, VEMP, vestibular evoke myogenic potential. Audiometry, yes. As a basic investigation, we always go for audiometry. Oral swab will be for deciding the drug of choice. Vestibular evoke myogenic potential, we always do if we have vestibular symptom in the patient. 
So among the given choices, the HRC is HRCT is the best option. On CT examination, you will be seeing hypotense lesion over the left mastoid set if you compare with the right temporal well pneumatized area. So hypotense destructive lesion on the mastoid with the surrounding area go in the favor of red deco syndrome. But sometimes examiner especially in the central institute the examiner give you two choices one is hrct second is mrf so here comes a confusion okay, which is a better mrf you books they mention hrct and i have seen many students asking in the dams exclusive club okay, hrct is a better choice or mri if both the options given always favor mri mri is a better option as even i have discussed with dr smith sir on mri you will be getting enhancement over the left pectoral apex as well as trigeminal tract. So, enhancement lesion over the left pectoral bone on trigeminal. Now, we will prove the diagnosis of red nevus syndrome. So, MRI will be the better option. Coming on the treatment segment, we go for medical treatment followed by search. In a medical treatment, we always favor broad spectrum antibiotics, fellowsporin, dimetronizol, and as far as surgery is concerned, we always prefer canal wall down mastodactyl, is where we are removing the infected air cells followed by draining of the fluids from the area surrounding the pictures bone. So it will be surgery, medical treatment followed by surgery. Thanks a lot for listening to me and in this crucial time I will advise everybody to revise the notes properly. Whatever notes you have just revise them in a proper way so that once the lockdown is over we will be again in a momentum. Thank you.